What is it with how much kids love planes, trains, and buses, including children on the autism spectrum? Now, some of whom know every line and every stop on the New York City subway system. The New York Transit Museum in downtown Brooklyn has no planes, but they recently won a prestigious national award by putting their trains and buses to very good use. They did that with an after-school program called Subway Sleuths, now in its sixth year, and here to tell us all about it is the museum's special education and access coordinator, Meredith Gregory. Welcome to BK Live. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for being here with us. So tell us how this all came about. Tell us about this connection. So we are located in a decommissioned subway station, as you mentioned, in downtown Brooklyn, and we have train cars from 115 years ago through today, and we also have a vintage bus that you can drive and also a newer bus that you can drive. So this is the place to be for people who have that passion for trains and transportation. And so we were seeing that people of all ages who had autism, who had that passion, were coming to our museum. And this program started as a response to mainly parents who had children with autism that were asking for us to start a program uh, for, for students who, and their children who love trains and transportation. So this was a reaction yeah. to the community really wanting us to start a program. We're looking at some of the images yeah. of your junior sleuths so cute. <laughs> hanging out down there in that decommissioned subway. So we also have a video to give people some idea about how young people are responding Great. to it. We're go there. I go on the bus awesome. and I pretend to drive it. I, it was so fun. One of them is um, because I like um, the train cars that are down here and I like it's a it's a really big old station so I could see all the train cars from a long time ago. My favorite train line is the 2-3 because it roars through Christopher Street, Sheridan Square. Hold the pole if you ever took the B train. Almost everybody. Everybody! So this is the program in action. You take mm -hmm. their natural curiosity and desire and fascination with it and teach them along the way. Absolutely. So the whole point of Subway Sluice is it's for second to fifth graders on the autism spectrum who, again, have that passion. Yeah. And we use that passion to help them build connections and communication between each other. So because they're in their favorite space in the whole entire world mm -hmm. and because they're motivated by trains, we can actually get them to open up to each other more and build that communication. Yeah, and depending on where a kid is on the spectrum, what we just saw is life life-changing, to be able to express yourself and have a response and be able to respond and do all these things are fundamental to them taking those skills into the real world. Absolutely. And that specific game that you saw was called Hold the Pole. Yeah. And the whole point of that game is one student, one sleuth, will tell us, what's your favorite train line? Yeah. Or what's you know, my favorite food is macaroni and cheese. And if other sleuths also have that interest, they'll come up and hold the pole. Yeah. And what's so amazing about that is this is the first time that they're realizing that they have a connection with another person. Yeah. They're not just thinking about their wants and needs and what they like, but they're also understanding that other people have, have similar wants and needs and, and likes of them. Right. So and right. And we're seeing so them simple, yeah, and we're seeing huge. them take those connections and those abilities mm -hmm. outside of this program as well, right? Absolutely. So we have had overwhelmingly positive response since we opened this program over five and a half years ago. And one thing that we hear a lot from the parents is that teachers are coming up to them and telling them what is different about your child because they're now more confident in the classroom. They're stating their opinions and speaking their mind, whereas before they were really quiet and reserved. And one parent told us that her son now has a best friend in school. Awesome. And she attributes that to Subway Sluice because he first made those connections with another child yeah. in this program. That's huge That's for amazing. any kid, especially yeah. one on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And the secret's out, Meredith. You have a very big fan who lives somewhere on Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue, I heard. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Michelle Obama, <laughs> don't leave Lisa. us. When she, so, so we received uh, this prestigious 
prestigious award, the National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Award, November 15th at the White House. Wow. Yeah. And in the picture is our subway sleuth, Ian. He is nine years old and also our deputy director, Regina Asborno, with the First Lady. Yeah, and familiar. she, <laughs> she um, presented this award to Ian and Regina last Tuesday, and it was just an amazing experience. Ian was so happy to be there and excited to meet Michelle Obama, and it was such a big step for him to be at the White House, and we were all crying as they went on stage. And one thing that I noticed about the White House is that they were really thinking about diversity and inclusion. They had an accessibility coordinator specifically there to make sure that Ian's needs were met. They had a quiet room. Uh, if Ian felt overwhelmed or if anyone else felt overwhelmed and it was in the red room of the White House. So Ian got wow. to sit in George Washington's dining room chair. And so the fact that they were thinking about accommodations and how to make sure people felt most welcome in the White House was really just apparent to me and something that Michelle Obama actually mentioned in her speech was that this is a place for everybody. And so it felt like just a really special moment. And this was like moments ago. Yeah. You were in the White House yeah. for one of the, that was the last time those awards are going to be given out. And you guys were there with the little sleuth. Yes, with our sleuth Ian. He was so sweet. He talked to Michelle Obama. He hugged her. And he was just really, and he's still talking about, I received an award from Mrs. Michelle Obama. So, what does this award mean for the future of the program? So, what we really hope for the program is. You know, it's a smaller program. We have about 36 children who do it each semester mm -hmm. who are who are our sluice. And so while we, while we necessarily don't want to grow the specific program, we want to make sure that we have other accessibility programs for all of our trained lovers with autism. So we're hoping to grow other programs to accommodate different ages, mm -hmm. to accommodate all s children on the spectrum. And about half of our sluice as well receives scholarships. So what I'm hoping to use from this award is not only to grow programs um, through additional funding, but also to have more donations come into the museum so that we can continue to offer these scholarships. We've seen that a lot of people who are on the autism spectrum do have a special connection with transportation and timetables mm -hmm. and the trains in New York City must be amazing if your mm -hmm. mind will let you see all of these possibilities. I wonder if there was any thought to having something like your program transfer to the larger MTA system where they can have little checkpoints or scan codes, like they're giving us books mm -hmm. to read short stories now, if there's any crossover potential. I know that, um, you know, for our students, they're at the point where they're, they're doing small group work with other people and the safe environment of our museum that is closed to the public is really important for the social connections that they're making through the program. Gotcha. But I know that there are applications out there for your phone, apps on your phone, that are thinking about riding the subway and how to um, make it uh, an easier system to understand and more interactive system for people with disabilities and for people with autism. And in fact, we have a program for sixth graders through adults uh, with developmental disabilities that teaches them uh, the first beginning steps to riding the subway that will lead towards independent subway travel and it's called Ready to Ride. So we're thinking about how to use our subway station museum as a classroom and as a space to really think about not only social skills for mm -hmm. sleuths but also how to get those first interactions with riding the subway because it is such a huge dynamic system. Yeah, absolutely. Meredith, tell us a little bit more about the actual sleuthing. Yeah, what do they How do does that come into <laughs> play? So our little sleuth detectives mm -hmm. definitely uh, play scavenger hunts around the museum, but you know, and they they find out facts in the different train cars. But the main point of this program is again to encourage communication and connections between each other. So all of our games have a train focus, but they also are very sneaky in the way mm -hmm. that they're learning new skills. Mm -hmm. 
So one of my favorite games is called Architect and Builder, mm -hmm. and they do it, uh, that game in pairs. One student is the builder, and he has, he or she, has wooden toy train tracks that they um, have to set up, and they have to listen to the architect. And this is an example of it right here. They're playing mm -hmm. with the lovely trains and our uh, toy train tracks. And the architect, who is their partner, has to tell them where they want the train track set up, so what kind of pattern they want the train track set up. But the catch is that they can only do it through nonverbal communication. So they either have to do hands, hands, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, shaking, eye yes contact. or no, eye contact. So and so they're motivated because they get to play with these toy train tracks, but they're secretly working on their flexibility, mm -hmm. going with somebody else's plan, nonverbal, mm -hmm. picking up social cues, non picking, up picking up facial expressions, yeah. and really learning nonverbal language, which can be hard for people on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. So those games that are train focused but have kind of other elements to it really. Uh, encourage that interaction. And the program is taught by a speech language pathologist, mm -hmm. a special education teacher in the New York City public school system, and a museum educator. So they're all working together as a team to think about what would be the best activities for these students. I feel half of us who are on the train on our phones and not even know how to acknowledge each other anymore could yeah. benefit yeah. from some of these Absolutely. programs as well. Yeah. You see a lot of stuff on the train. So how can people come yeah. down and get involved and work with you guys? So we have a new website which just Whoa. launched this summer, which I'm really excited about. It's very fancy. <laughs> and you can go to www.nytransitmuseum.org slash subway sluice. We have videos on there. We have parent testimonies testimonials and you can also donate on that webpage. Yeah, you can donate towards someone's too. scholarships which is really exciting. So uh, that website also has all of the information on how to get to the museum. We hope to see you soon. Excellent. Thank you well, so remember you guys much, Meredith. Season. <laughs> yeah. it's a great Thank program. you. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Tell Michelle hey if you see her again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We're, we're best friends now. So <laughs> yeah. when people were shouting four more years when she came in. We love her. <laughs>